Hi there and welcome to another edition of Busternet. My name is Rashidi. Yes, I have been away for a really long time. I apologize. I had tons of things to do. I had exams to do. Pass the exam. Yeah, I'm happy. And now I finally get a chance to play the game. And coincidentally, the first day I get a chance to play the game is the day FM16 is out. That's cool. But it puts me in this unique position where I need to actually understand the engine very quickly. And this is what the whole goal of today's YouTube video is. Today's YouTube video will focus on how I typically start a season with FM. And this is perfect. So one of the things I do naturally, <laughs> like any other person who might be doing it, is I go to solidoutsi.net and I pick up um I pick up updates to their logo packs because I want my logos to look nice. So I use the metallic logos and I pick up their updates and you know if you haven't done this before you generally need to download the whole pack and the whole pack is actually huge it's like 4.29 gigabytes uh, since i've been downloading them regularly over the last few years all i need to do is pick up the latest changes which is this 95.21 megabytes which is much much smaller so back in the game um, they've already been installed i haven't had a chance to play the game yet um, so one of the things I do is I will, it's pre-season, right? So we go to fitness, I told them to go very high, no resting boys, and I'll put it back to the assistant. Then I go to tactics. Now, tactics, um, I generally like to start the season and see where the match engine is. And the reason why I start with football manager, in this case it's called football manager touch, is very simple. The, you don't have gelling so you don't need to worry about your team getting used to a system you can try any system out even in the game itself and then you can get a good idea of what the engine is like at the end of the day this gives you a really solid foundation when you want to invest your time in the full-fledged game i recommend strongly that if you're not very sure about where the changes in the match engine have occurred pick up fmt try it out play a few games you generally need only about 10 to 15 games to figure things out sometimes i even come back into this game and um i try new things out before i put them into this uh, full-fledged sim one of the things that i would seriously recommend is if you're going to do this kind of a uh, match engine testing pick a team um pick a team that is of a reasonable standard i mean i picked liverpool it's, oh, this is going to be a challenge anyway so um if you're in england you you want to pick teams that have a solid chance of winning the title why do i say this you want to rule out technical ability as the one of the reasons why your tactic doesn't work out because even though gelling is taken out of the equation you want to pick sites that are good enough so that you can try different things out with them like chelsea arsenal liverpool united liverpool not so much i wouldn't recommend it to everybody uh, man city manchester united chelsea these are three clubs are really good to pick start off with um you get to try out the tactic you know you um you want to find out if our changes work the way they're supposed to work and that's a really good place to start so now i've picked my tactic up you want to also pick a tactic that you know i've picked a 4312 i know this tactic but one of the best one of the other tactics is really good is actually the 442 if you want to try a defensive system i'm trying defensive because last few seasons attacking tends to overpower defensive system so I want to see how a defensive system sets up the other thing you want to do is avoid using team instructions at the start you want to minimize the effect of shouts try one shout out at a time and then go from there but don't make multiple shouts and then you know you won't know where what's affecting what uh, i've taken a defensive uh, 4312 and played structure personally you know you, you could use structure or flexible but uh, structured means um, this, the mentality splits are a bit more pronounced. Okay, so here we are. We're going to start this off. I've sorted everything out. Um, a good idea when you're in this is also to go and set up your saves. You know, I've got a three-week rolling autosave. Um, the reason why it's a three-week rolling autosave is really simple. I hate crashes. But they tend to happen at the start of every single game. Um, so, 
having an auto save gives you a chance to go back and save the day all right so we have all set up um okay quick pick let's see how the um the match selections are working out okay so you know the quick pick assistant manager will you know what, which assistant manager wants to drop coutinho off as a defensive or deep line playmaker not very ideal uh we've got alan coutinho milner i rather yeah, okay so lucas is there we'll play lucas instead so i know now that the ass man is not gonna make um he doesn't make very good selections still um i don't know sometimes it sometimes he does um for now i will monitor this a bit closely um if it does prove to be a problem i will have to do it myself okay so we've set this up um, everything looks okay there are certain other changes like you know you, you in the game uh, back with advice is a lot better now uh, they also have a set piece creator i'm not going to focus on this in um when i want to look at the engine i don't look at set pieces not so soon i concentrate on the match engine itself see how it plays out and then once i'm suitably satisfied i actually you know start messing with the set piece create set piece creator so for now um we'll run through the game you'll join me again pretty soon in our first game all right we're back um and all set for our first match of the season we are going to be playing against a american side called fc dallas um playing a defensive structure with no team instructions because i want to see how these players play we are using a 4-3-1-2 let me explain this really quickly we plan to go launching up from here the full back was going to launch up the left flank to do that i'm going to hold this guy back emre chan will be in a diff more defensive role on the right flank we've got a supporting milner this um i could get Klein to be a bit more attacking but because milner is probably going to be a bit more forward so we're going to hold Klein back because you're going to have gaps here emerging up front we've got a combination of uh, Firmino, Coutinho is injured, he's on an attack, he's going to probably charge in, we're going to see whether he naturally charges in, uh, if we look at his um, abilities we will notice that, alright if we look at Firmino, his acceleration is only 12, average, not that fantastic, so he's not going to beat people, you know, he's not going to turn them and run off charging like a bullet, that's not his gameplay, he finds pockets of space, his off the ball is 18 okay and his um, vision and work rate are pretty good so i don't expect him to be making those kind of runs a lot and even if i give him a ppm i don't think it's going to be useful we have um so moreno is going to be expected to charge up the flanks with chan holding back and up front we've got bentike as a more like a deep lying hold up man and inks is going to be playing as a um f9 Okay, we're all set. So let's uh, get this game off. No team instructions, like I said earlier. One of the things you want to do is clear opposition instructions. I need to see the baseline. Okay, here we go. The match is underway. Immediately, I know we're playing a defensive system. Okay, now let me pause again. What I'm going to be looking at is several things. This Klein sitting very narrow as a fullback. Over here, Foley. That's gonna have pockets of space on the on this flank. Down at the bottom, we've got Alberto Moreno and Sarko. So I'm gonna be looking at the fullbacks to see how they handle space. And we're also watching the game on extended highlights. Preferably, you want to see it on something like comprehensive if you're not sure. I'm looking at now my midfielders to um, just make sure that they are controlling space. Lucas back heals the ball, gives the ball to someone called uh, who plays someone who plays the ball to Villarreal and Hearn scores. That's an early goal. Not a great start for Liverpool. Defensively we look shocking. A bit of a mix up in the back line. The whole reason
reason why I'm playing defensive is simply to see how a team handles defensive football and whether or not they can counter at speed. Like I said earlier, I'm not done anything with set pieces, so if there's a goal from a set piece, um, I didn't intend it. These are all default settings. Inks plays it back to Klein. Ventica should be offside. Now it seems like offsides are so easy to play. It seems like players get caught in offside positions way too easily at the moment. Okay, without any changes in a defensive setup. Okay, now that I have seen some elements of the game, we are going to try making some changes to see what the effect is going to be. So I'm going to put it on pause. I'm going to go to my shouts. The first thing I'm going to try, and I don't recommend doing more than one shout. Okay, so first thing I'm going to try is this. Work ball into box. What does work ball into box do? It'll reduce crosses. It's not great for Ben DK. But it will also mean they pass the ball instead of just punting the ball into the box, which is something that might work in our favour. Emre Chan already has a yellow card. I need to see him stay in the game, so we'll have to tell him personally to take it easy. Mm -hmm. Pause. Emre Chan. Edit. Ease off tackles. Alright, so... That should be enough. Ooh, off the bar. Oh, we're just messing, we're just trying things out. Okay, so now I want to see how my players actually. I'm going to go to comprehensive now. I'm more interested in the defensive side of the game at the moment. Wow, how that stayed out, I have, how that stayed out, I have no clue. No, there's a horrible pass, Sako plays it back, Inks takes control of the ball really well. Milner's got zero clue on passing the ball. It's every single pass he's making, Every single pass those two boys are making, not very good. So what we're gonna do, pretty soon, after this passage of play, is to change the passing setup of James Milner and Omri Chan. I'm gonna tell them to uh, play less risky passes. Another hits the woodwork again okay we're gonna tell this player to play less risky passes all right that should do the trick okay and we're gonna tell this player the same thing so they're not gonna be playing those direct passes anymore because you can see as you can see if when they are on default in a, uh, a central midfielders in a defensive system, this is what they tend to do. Their passing is mixed. That means that they are given the decision on what to do. And I don't want that to be the case. So he's going to do a few risky passes. The reason why I've done that is Milner has been wasting a lot of passes. So this might be better because we have... Um, Coutinho was in front of them. I'm oh, sorry, Firmino was in front of them. It was better passing. Ings with the ball, Ben TK. 
holds it up for inks. It's going wide, he cuts it in, plays it to Bentike. Bentike cannot get the header right. Alright, so half time. Um, we're not doing that badly. So Joe Gomez, I'll give him a chance to play. So we'll bring Joe Allen for Amber Chan. Uh, most of the players need to get up and play a bit. So we shall now start the second half. Okay, we made two changes. Uh, only because I'm just rotating the side. Because it's early season. Okay, so we can see that um, defensively we seem to be fine. There was no need to do any more changes. We the first goal we can see there was really a goof up more than anything else. Alberto cuts it. Ben, oh my goodness! Did you just see Bentike's miss? That has to go down as one of the great great misses of all time. Inks. F9 is playing really well. Bentike, Firmino, that's what I mean by off the ball. Alberto out wide. He's going to try something ridiculously stupid. Early season. This is all the drama that comes with preseason. Okay, we look like we're doing alright in terms of um, how we're moving the ball around. The boys are just not creating good enough chances in and around the box which leads me to think that I may have to make one change to um, one of the um, one of the midfielders right it's Milner I'm going to take him off and put in Adam Lalana and tell Adam Lalana to play more as a box to box midfielder Central midfielder on attack. Okay, that's it. Let's see if it's, let's see if we can lend some support in and around the box. This seems to be a problem for us creating class chances. Well, we're not playing that badly. We could be playing a lot. We could be, you know, hopefully we get a goal back. Oh, we do get a goal back. Liverpool score an equaliser. Lalana with that really good ball to find Ben DK. Ben DK took control of the ball and put the ball into the back of the net. Not bad. Okay, it's alright. It's supposed to be a defensive system. We managed to actually do pretty well defensively for a while, even though we conceded the first goal. But overall, not that bad. We didn't give FC Dallas a lot of easy chances. I just want to make sure that my players are in the right spots to defend. And so far, it looks okay. They're cutting out a lot of passes, which allowed me the luxury of getting Lalana to move up as an attacking midfielder. Got the goal. Um, it's only one all. It's fine. I'm okay. We rescue a late draw. Well, now you guys are going to think I'm a complete nutter, but this is actually what I do. Um, I've been doing this for a really long time. I keep detailed notes on whatever I find out in terms of match engine testing. I will note down the build number or the version that we are playing. In this case, is a 
16.1.1 and then I will look at things like with defensive passing, with full passing, forward passing, closing down, PIs, team instructions and how they play, what do they seem to affect or whether or not it's a good idea to get stuck in or stay on feet in certain situations, whether I use these shouts, then I'll stick them in what, what I found out. Like One thing I found out playing the 4-3-1-2 defensive was that it's really narrow understandable if you looked at the team instructions you see that but this means that the full banks are quite close to the central defenders leaving acres of space on the flanks which can be exploited the next thing on i looking i looked at was defensive passing now i want to know whether my passes can find the guys in front in fm15 you could actually launch icbms from your fullbacks it was one of my choice weapons in all my systems now i'm looking at that to see whether or not the same thing happens again midfield passing already found out very really quickly that there is definitely a hit on passing it looks to me like there's a penalty and it's quite discernible if you noticed in the last game milner was making a lot of short shocking passes uh, took him off, put him on Lanana, gave him a role change to see the effect that would have. Um, Lanana naturally moved a bit more forward and played the decisive ball that got us our equaliser. Then I look at forward passing, closing down there. Other stuff that is going to be on this list is actually quite a long list. I look at it and I test it. I test one shot and I'll find out what another shot is. I'm not advocating you guys do the same thing, but this is what I do. By the time I finish 10 games, I really have a good clue on how I'm going to be playing because I know what will work and what won't work. And then I fly off and I don't look back. This is how I play. And if you want a quick and dirty guide, then you'll have to wait for me to play 10 games. And I'll put what I found out on the blog and on the YouTube channel and also on the forums. By then, I should have a fairly solid idea of what systems I'm going to be using. I'm looking at starting the season with a 4 3 one, 2 and probably a 4 4 2 and some asymmetric systems as well, just for the fun of it. Toss everything into the kettle and see what boils over. Um, well, I've hoped you've enjoyed this edition of BusterNet where I've looked at FM16. I definitely am going to do more videos. Sorry, I just couldn't take the time out to do any earlier. And I know some of you asked me questions about FM15 and asked me to take a look at some of your tactics. I will look at those tactics and do some analysis when I have the time. Meantime, I hope you enjoy every moment of the game. Um, I shout out to all of my other friends. Take care. I'll catch you guys again very, very soon. Bye-bye.